Hi there, I'm Kavita Bartake from Cherry Street Investments. I wanted to take this chance to talk to you guys about the pros and cons of single family investments. I have a lot of investors who are always keen to go to the single family route and I wanted to give some objective opinion about how single family works versus other investments. So let's just talk about a few pros of single family homes. For one, single family homes are very accessible, so you can always um, buy a single family home without much of a uh, planning process. So if you find a realtor, you find a house, the, the cash flow numbers work fine, uh, you, it's easy to get into a single family home uh, as long as you qualify for a mortgage. So I would say the accessibility and ease of owning a single family home is definitely something to consider. Also, uh, let's say I, go buy an apartment complex with 50 units in one location then versus buying 50 single family homes you're definitely spreading the risk of um, investment by having different locations with a single family home although that does come at a cost uh, and we'll talk about that later uh, there's also a better chance of a single family home rental being occupied in a downturn versus let's say an equal and multifamily, especially in a market where the single family home rentals are very affordable. So think about it as if a tenant can have a house with a yard uh, at the same rental cost as a multifamily or an apartment unit, they would definitely choose a single family rental. So those are the, some of the pros of single family rentals. Now look, let's look at some of the cons. Some of the cons I can think of are one, uh, the cash flow on single family rentals in most markets now is really low. So we're looking at anywhere between uh, $100 to $200 for a typical rental in Texas, if that. Now you add in any repair cost and that cash flow is literally wiped away. So the property as taxes as well as insurance have been steadily going up in most markets and single family rentals don't make much sense in those markets. Although there are places in Midwest that you can definitely look at where the prices are still relatively low and the cash flow is very good in single family rentals, the only word of caution I would advise there is that look at good areas. Uh, don't let the cost of the single family home be the only factor because what you pay, when you pay low cost and you get low rents, you're also dealing with a tenant base that potentially might not pay. So you'll be stuck with a lot of bad debt. So cost is not the only factor while buying a single family rental and don't cheap out on it because you'll have a whole lot of hassle later. The other thing with single family rentals is it's either occupied or it's not occupied. So it's a zero or a hundred percent in terms of occupancy, which is a problem because when it's not occupied, you're basically paying for it out of a pocket, out of your pocket. So now that's fine if you have a couple of rentals, but just scale it to 10, 20, 30, and that's when you'll start seeing a problem. Uh, of course, not all of them will be unoccupied at the same time, but it's still a hassle to manage because one, they're ge geographically probably spread out. You have multiple roofs to worry about, multiple insurance companies, multiple insurance policies, multiple tax records. Uh, there's just a multiple of them, which makes management that much of a hassle. Typically, property management for insurance uh, for a, a single family unit runs about eight to 10%. So that's another factor to keep in mind um, that the property management cost can be pretty high. And if you don't want to self-manage, that's again, eating out of your pocket. So to summarize, um, I think there are some valid um, arguments in favor of multi single family homes. And a lot of people do buy single family homes when they think about real estate investments. Um, most people that I talk to, most investors, when I say real estate or when they think real estate, they're thinking of buying a single family home. So just look out, think outside the box, look outside of single family homes. And if you do want to invest in a single family home, I would encourage you to look at a market where you can make 1%. We have a 1% rule in single family. So if you can make 1% of the um, cost of the house, uh, in rent every month. So for example, if I have a $200,000 house, if I can make $2,000 in rent on the house, then I will cash flow. It's just how the logistics work on most single family homes. 
So that's a good rule of thumb to follow uh, when you're looking at a single family property or even a multiple couple of units. So what I advise also is if you're looking at single family homes and want to stay small, try to go for multiple units if you can, even if it's three, four, two, three, four, five unit instead of one unit. This just makes things a lot more efficient when you start adding more units and also keeps your cash flow going even when it's one couple of units are not occupied. So that's a short view, uh, overview of pros and cons of single family investing. Hope this was useful. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.